This could be the last Yeezy Boost 350 V2 release ever. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Carbon Beluga, the last release of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2. Probably. But before we dive into the review, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm actually giving this pair away and also some other pairs of sneakers, including other Yeezys that dropped on Yeezy Day. So if you guys would like to check out that giveaway, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below and sign up for Whatnot. And I should also mention that this video is sponsored by Whatnot, so huge thank you to Whatnot for supporting the channel. If you guys haven't heard of Whatnot, Whatnot is a live auction shopping platform with sneaker auctions 24 hours a day, starting at just $1. And if you use my link to sign up for Whatnot, you get $10 towards your first purchase. That's $10 off anything that you buy on the app, including pairs of Yeezys or other sneakers. And like I said, I'm giving away this pair of Yeezys and some more Yeezys on my upcoming WhatNot live stream. Link in the description below. Make sure to bookmark that live stream. Plus, I'm selling a lot of sneakers from my own personal collection. So if you guys want to grab some of the Seth Fowler collection or have a chance to win a pair of Yeezys for free, make sure to sign up for WhatNot using that link right there. Personally, I love WhatNot and I use it all the time. I just recently bought a pair of White Cement Reimagined 3s. I also grabbed a bunch of Mario Party games. I have a shopping addiction. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You guys probably already know that by this point. Whatnot is great because it allows you to see the products that you're buying real time, ask questions to the seller real time, and you know exactly what you're getting versus some other platforms where you just get a couple pictures. On Whatnot, you actually get to see a full 360 view, and you can say like, hey, it looks like there's a stain on the back of that shoe. Can you show me that stain? So once again, huge thank you to Whatnot for supporting the channel, and make sure to check out my live stream coming up in the next couple days. Bookmark it by clicking that link in the description below. And if it's your first time signing up for Whatnot, again, you get 10 bucks towards your first purchase. But now that you know how you can win this pair for yourself, let's talk about the actual release for this shoe and how it went down. So it's old news at this point, but Yeezy and Adidas split up at the end of last year. I believe it was October 2022. And at that point, no one really knew if Kanye West and Adidas were ever going to release any more sneakers. The problem for Adidas was that there was about a billion dollars worth of product that had already been produced that they couldn't release because their contract with Yeezy had been broken. So over the last couple months, Adidas was trying to figure out what to do with all of the product they produced. They could destroy it, which would be just a huge waste of product and honestly money, or they could try and sell it. But the problem with that was that they'd have to work with Kanye again, which they weren't really trying to do. So they had to find a middle ground. And what they decided to do was to sell all of the remaining product on Yeezy Day, which was yesterday, May 31st, and donate a portion of the profits to some charities. And from what I can tell, after yesterday's sale, I believe all of the produced Yeezy product should be gone. I don't know if there's ever going to be another Yeezy Adidas release ever again. I mean, it's possible that there are some other colorways that they didn't show us yet that they might drop randomly in the next couple months. I kind of doubt it. I think that everything that they had lined up just got released. But if you guys know anything else, let me know in the comment section down below. But during that release, we got this shoe, the Carbon Beluga 350 V2, a shoe that's been leaked for the last year and a half. It was supposed to drop at the end of last year. But of course, because of everything going on with Kanye, and Adidas, it was not able to be dropped, and instead they dropped it yesterday for the standard retail price of $230. Now, if you missed out on the Yeezy Day sale on the Adidas Confirmed app and you want to grab a pair of these for yourself, I've made sure to leave affiliate links to this shoe in the top of the description below. Of course, it will be resale links because the shoe is no longer available. And what's interesting about this release is that because they were trying to completely clear out of their stock, Adidas said that this shoe was final sale. So if you bought a pair and it didn't fit, you're gonna have to resell it. But hey, the good thing about this release is that this is really just another standard pair of Yeezy Boost 350 V2s. The only real difference between this shoe and any of the previous releases is the colorway. So in theory, if you've bought 350 V2s before, you should be relatively comfortable with the sizing of this sneaker. You should know what size to go with, and uh, we'll get more into that later on in the video, even though there have been some inconsistencies with 350 V2 sizing. I don't know why it took five or six, actually at this point, Adidas has been releasing 350 V2s for seven years. You'd think the sizing should be consistent by now, and I think now it kinda is, but over the last seven years, it's been pretty different. I don't know, but again, if you've bought 350 V2s before, you generally know the sizing, you generally know what you should do, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. But before we dive into that, let's first talk about the box that this shoe came in. So as you probably could have guessed, the box is pretty much standard fare for Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2s. You've got your natural cardboard drawer box with the 350 on the top, the boost on the size, and then I guess the most interesting part of the box is the size tag. Now, I grabbed my pair from GOAT. Uh, I spent a lot of money on it because I did next day instant ship. And also something interesting about this shoe, which I actually heard about in Elliot Page's review of the shoe, but my box came with dryer sheets inside. I didn't actually notice it when I was unboxing the shoe, but then when I started to look at the shoe more in depth when I was working on this review, I realized that there was dryer sheets inside the shoe and in the box, and I believe that has to do with the problem that Elliot Page was talking about, that the pairs that came from GOAT smelled like which I would assume that's not the case for the pairs that are coming from Adidas, but who knows? I mean, they were sitting around for 
almost a year at this point, so it's possible someone in the warehouse was getting a little crazy. I don't know. I don't know if that's Goat's fault or Adidas's fault. I didn't buy a pair from Adidas, so I won't have any frame of reference, but a very interesting problem to have, and it looks like either they watched Elliot Page's review and threw dryer sheets in the box to try and solve that problem, or maybe uh, there were already dryer sheets in the box. I don't know, either way. It didn't smell like what I said it smelled like when I actually got the shoe in, it smelled like dryer sheets, and now I know why. But all that aside, I grabbed a size nine, which is my true size, and the official colorway of this shoe is Carbell Stigray Soul Red. Carbon something gray, solar red, I would assume. It's the, uh, the way to read that, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But either way, pretty standard box, let's get back into the sneakers themselves. It's weird, I got so sick of reviewing 350 V2s over the last seven years, and now that I haven't done one in like six months to a year, it's kinda nice to review this shoe again. I haven't worn my 350s in a minute, but uh, it's nice to check out a new pair that's slightly different. So right off the bat, this carbon beluga pair will look very familiar because it's very similar to the standard beluga 350 V2s. The only real difference is the difference in tone on the upper of the sneaker and also the tone of the midsole of the shoe. When compared to the original, Beluga 350 V2, or at least the reflective version of the Beluga 350 V2, you'll notice that the design is almost identical, except of course for the darker stripes on the side of the shoe and the darker midsole. And to be honest with you, I actually don't know which colorway I like better. I think I'm leaning more towards the Beluga colorway because I'm more used to this colorway, but this newer carbon Beluga colorway is actually not bad. It reminds me a little bit of like some high visibility work gear, but I guess so did this pair as well. But there's something about that sort of greenish brown gray that they use in the stripes of this shoe that just look more, I don't know, outdoorsy, more like construction-y, I'm not sure. But I'd love to know your thoughts on the differences between these two shoes and which pair you'd prefer to have in your collection. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But getting into the materials that make up this pair of Carbon Beluga 350 V2s, the entire upper of the shoe is covered in your standard Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Prime Knit. In fact, this is the original Prime Knit pattern used on the 350 V2. Over the last seven years, we've had a lot of different iterations of 350 V2 Prime Knit patterns. We've had semi-translucent stripes on the side, we've had completely smooth midfoot panels, a lot of different versions of the shoe, but this is the original, this is the one that everyone probably remembers, and it's actually the stiffest version of the Prime Knit, mainly because on this knit pattern, the toe of the sneaker has the thickest or the largest amount of Prime Knit that's sort of overlaid over top of each other, so it's a little bit less stretchy than some of the newer pairs, but really it's not that noticeable. Running up the center of the shoe, you've got this stitching detail, which actually carries all the way around to the heel of the shoe, it kind of makes the entire shoe look cobbled together, which I like, I've said that in every 350 V2 review that has this stitching detail, and I actually prefer when 350 V2s have this stitching detail versus when they don't, because it just makes the shoe look more like a Yeezy Boost. Like, more pairs have this than don't, and it's a detail that I really love about the 350 V2s. I know some people don't, but I think it's a nice touch. Moving down the lateral side of the sneaker, you've got that iconic Yeezy Boost 350 V2 double stripe. The bottom stripe is a sort of dark greenish gray color that we've seen on the rest of the sneaker. And the top stripe, of course, is that bright orange beluga color. You've got Supply 350 or SPLY 350 embroidered into the orange stripe. And of course, the orange stripe sort of digitally fades out or pixelates out into the upper of the shoe, which I really love on both the front and the back of the sneaker. And then moving to the medial side or the inside of the sneaker, you get this really clear look at the beluga wavy pattern, which I absolutely love. It's my favorite part of the shoe. Now, obviously on this colorway, it's a lot darker than on the standard belugas, and you can actually see the orange speckling a lot clearer on this pair. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe they just made it clearer or made it more apparent on this colorway, or maybe because you've got more contrast because of the darker colors, you can see it more. And I really love the way that this medial side looks. I think even more so than the medial side on the original Beluga. If I could have like the outside of this shoe and the inside of this shoe, that would look awful, Never mind. that was an awful idea. Now unlike the recent Beluga 350 V2 reflective release, the upper of this shoe is not reflective whatsoever, it's only reflective on the laces. And speaking of the laces, this shoe comes with your standard, or I guess more close to the original, 350 V2 laces. They're very thick, they're pretty stiff, they're rope laces obviously, and as you can see they have a lot of reflective hits sort of woven into the entirety of the lace. Now as you probably know, 350 V2 laces don't really do much, they don't really tighten the shoe around your foot, they're kind of just there, mainly for a Aesthetics, I believe. I don't think they really bring the upper of the shoe together. They might a little bit. Like if you're a size eight and a half and you grabbed a size nine, they might help with the fit a little bit. But this shoe is really designed more to be a sock shoe or like a slip-on style shoe. I don't think I've retied the laces on my 350s in years, and I just don't. I just don't really see the purpose of them. But they do make the shoe look better overall. I think without the laces, the shoe is kind of bland. But with the laces, it does help to sort of finish off the visual look of the sneaker. Personally, I prefer the sort of infinity laces on the 350 V2s because it's a cleaner look. You don't have these like long laces 
laces hanging off the shoe whenever you tie the shoe. There are people who prefer these laces to those laces. Not really that big of a deal, just another iteration of the 350 V2s. Moving towards the ankle area of the sneaker, you've got this sort of dark gray, greenish piping area surrounding the top of the ankle. Towards the heel of the shoe, you've got some more of that dark gray, green color on the sock liner of the shoe. And of course, you've got your Adidas three stripes on the actual heel of the sneaker. They're reflective, as most pairs are. And then moving inside the shoe, you've got that same color on the insole of the sneaker with Adidas logos and Yeezy logos printed on the heel in a slightly lighter greenish gray color. But now let's get into sizing and fit. And like I mentioned earlier, this carbon beluga colorway fits just like the standard beluga colorway. For me, I like to go true to size. Adidas actually recommends going up a half size, but I prefer the more snug fit of true to size. But like I said, if you bought 350 V2s before, you generally know what you're getting with this shoe, and I would recommend just grabbing the standard size that you usually grab. Do what works best for you. Unfortunately, if you grab the wrong size from Adidas, you can't return it. You're going to have to resell it or exchange it or something like that. So something to keep in mind, but ask around. I'm sure your friend has a pair. You can try their pair on. That's probably the best way to go. Also, I don't know if you noticed the perfectly matching upcoming Apothecary Phyllis Streets Department sock collection that I was rocking in the Onfa portions of this video. It's fire. It drops this upcoming Friday, June 9th. Not only that, we've also got a shirt, which also matches the shoe incredibly well. And on the back of the shirt also says Phyllis Streets Department. Super cool. Love this collection. But yeah, again, if you guys want to grab any of the socks or the shirts, they drop officially on June 9th at apothecary.com, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Following the stripe back on the lateral side of the sneaker, as I mentioned before, towards the heel of the shoe, the stripe kind of pixelates into nothingness, which I think is a really nice touch. Of course, you've got that stitching detail running up the center of the heel. And then, like with most other Yeezy Boost 350 V2s, or most of the original ones, and now some of the more recent ones, you've got that little butt detail right there, which is kind of funny. That's a way that people used to legit check Yeezys. I don't know if that's still a good way to legit check Yeezys, but it's an interesting little hit, kind of a weird little lump on the back of the shoe. I guess that's just the way that the shoe came together when it was stitched together, I'm not sure, but that's what Adidas Yeezys do. Moving down on the sneaker, you get to your standard 350 V2 midsole. This time around, it comes in sort of a dark smoky gray versus the light gray that the original blue just come in. Of course, you've got a full length boost midsole underneath this rubber. The outsole rubber of the shoe wraps up under the heel of the sneaker, but the good thing about that is, is that unlike a lot of the other 350 V2s, the outsole rubber color is very similar to the midsole rubber rubber color, so there isn't too much of a weird splotch on the back of the shoe like you do have in some other colorways. But uh, all around, pretty standard Yeezy Boost 350 V2. Obviously, it's a new colorway, one that I think some people might like more than other 350 V2s because they like the beluga hit, but they like the darker look. It really depends on what you like personally in terms of colorways. I mean, the shoe itself is relatively unchanged from any of the recent Yeezy Boost 350 V2s. The good news for you is if you missed out on a pair of these on Yeezy Day, which honestly was kind of hard to do because these were sitting for a long time, which is weird to see for pairs of 350 V2s, you should be able to grab a pair of these for retail or maybe like $10 over on places like Goat and StockX and whatnot, of course. So if you guys want to grab these shoes, grab them resale. You should be good to go. Again, if you guys want to grab these shoes for free, make sure to check out my Whatnot live stream. Link in the top of the description below. A good Yeezy Boost 350 V2 release. It's not the best. I'm kind of bummed that this is the last 350 V2 because it's not the most exciting pair in the world, but I guess in a way it is kind of poetic because you had the Belugas start off the 350 V2s and you have a different version of the Belugas finishing off the 350 V2s. So a very, very long and storied lifespan for a pair of sneakers that changed the sneaker industry and I'm sad to see it come to an end. Now it's possible that this isn't the last pair to release, but I'm thinking that it is, and uh, I'm sad to see them go. Although personally, I did kind of stop wearing them a couple years ago just because I had so many other sneakers in my collection that were newer that I wanted to wear. So not a huge loss for me personally, but uh, it is kind of sad to see such an iconic silhouette finally come to a close. But hey, at this point in the video, I would love to know your thoughts on the Carbon Beluga 350 V2, possibly the last 350 V2 to ever release. So make sure to let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.